I move for no man. No man. No man. No man. No man. No man. No What's up? We have yo, started yo, yo, the yo. podcast, episode five. Damn, we're on five we... already? Yeah, we're on five. I'm glad I right. actually knew we were starting this time. We didn't talk for 20 minutes and then find out we we didn't start yet. It's good. Yeah, that was my bad. I thought <laughs> I won't be doing that anymore. So I feel like I'd well, I don't, rather just me get Gary you just had a pretty, shit in your environment. Pretty good conversation. You yeah, just me and Chris actually training. had a full podcast before you figured out your audio. Oh, that's beautiful. So... <laughs> Freaking filming training in, secrets. Man. You, training secrets of the champs. About your weekend or what uh, you guys did or what? what no, we were, were actually talking just talking about training. Like I, I asked Gary, like, you know, if, if when he has a fight coming up, how he trains in between fights, and we we're both kind of similar. We both train year round. We do certain things. We'll take some days off and and whatnot. Um, and then we we're just kind of compare, comparing notes on on sparring. You know, I'm 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 an older guy, been around you know for a long time. I'm 36, coming up in March. I spar a lot less than I used to, where Gary says that he spars every day in order to make up for, you know, I, Gary, you can talk for yourself and make it up yeah. for, you know. You know I, just have, I have a lot of, I have a lot, lot of uh, time to make up in terms of experience. Um, you know, it was, it was interesting. Um, uh, you know, I know we're going to get to this later on. Um, so, you know, we'll get to the Kobe Bryant topic, but like, uh, I didn't, I, I don't really follow basketball, so I don't know much about the guy. Um, but uh, I had asked one of my friends, you know, cause they seemed like really broken up about it. I was like, I was like, yo, like, I don't know much about basketball. So it didn't hit me very hard. You know, like, obviously it sucks that a person died, you know, especially him and his kid. Well, um, I think it was more than just, I, I think he transcended the sport. So, yeah. so this is what I'm saying. See, I, I hadn't experienced him on any level. Like gotcha. all I knew was his name. Like I never heard him speak nothing. Like, like if you had showed me a photograph of a bunch of different basketball players, I don't even know if I would have been able to identify who he was, to be honest. Gotcha. So I had asked my friend, I was like, Hey, you know, like what's, she's like, it's not about basketball. It's, it's just what you said. She's like, no, like it was more than that. And I was like, Oh, can you like maybe send me some stuff that, uh, send me some stuff that like he said, some interviews or something. So I get a rough idea of like what you're talking about. So she sends me this, you know, a couple motivational like clips or whatever of him talking and one of the ones that he talked uh, talked about, he was talking about like the hours a day that he works. And uh, he was like, well, you know, you could have a training schedule where you wake up at 10 a.m. And then, you know, maybe you get to training at 12 and then you are right, you go 12 to 2. Now you eat. Then maybe you go, um, you know, I don't know, 6 to 8 and then eat again and then you go to bed. Right. And he's like, well, my thought process was, well, I'm going to wake up at 4, train at 6. And the train from six to eight, and now I'm going to be able to get three or maybe four training sessions in, and while everybody else is only going to be able to get those two, right? And I know it's a very simple like mentality to have, but um, and he he basically kind of continued to comment and said like, if I'm operating like that, you know, let's say for five years, for ten years, whatever the case may be, he's like, these guys can do whatever they want, they're just never going to be able to catch up. You know what I mean? Um, and I I think similarly in the sense that like. I have so much to catch up on considering I've never fought before, uh, you know, my first professional MMA fight, which was when I was 26. And I'm literally going to be fighting guys. Some of them have like I know guys like Rory McDonald have been fighting since they were 15. You mm -hmm. know, many of them have extensive amateur careers. Um, I have no amateur career. You know what I mean? Like I just haven't I haven't put the time in. So, you know, is it is it a good or a bad thing that I'm sparring every day? I don't know, but I I I know that it's pretty much necessary. If at one if at, if I have the goal to like beat the best in the world one day, there's just no question. I got to do something to make up for lost time. You know what I mean? I just don't have the the hours in the cage that these guys have, and I have to figure that out. You know? How hard are you guys going? Them. Go ahead. How hard are you guys going? So, so that's interesting. Like it's, it's, uh, you got to find good training partners. I've found that that's like the most important thing. It's like, regardless of, of anything, if you don't have people that are really looking out for you, like, and it's got to kind of go both ways. Otherwise you got to continuously find new training partners. Yeah. Um, it's, it's never going to be good. Like I can't bring a bunch of guys in that are trying to knock my head knock off. And I can't not try to knock all their heads off. Yeah. Cause if I do that, then nobody's going to want to come back into sparring. You know what do I mean? Do you guys wear, do you wear headgear? 
Uh, I wear headgear, but it's mostly to stop cuts. I don't give a shit about it. I don't really think it, it impacts your concussions at all. I think if anything, it probably leads to you getting hit more. But I just don't want to get cut, you know, leading up to fights and things like that. So I just feel like it leads to a lot, you know, accidental headbutts, elbows, this, that, and the other thing. There's so much, that, especially in MMA, like in boxing, it's like, all right, well, maybe you might get headbutted. But like in MMA, there's so much other shit going on. Like maybe I duck to go for a takedown. And a dude goes for a kick, and now I got fucking yep. like a knee in my fucking eye. You know, even with the headgear, I've had my face split open because of that. You know, so that's, it's like and that's super common. I've seen that in so many MMA gyms. Guys, yeah. just you know, you're changing levels. You got kicks and knees, and mm-hmm. knees are like they're, they're like knives. Yeah, they they, yes. they 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 touch a they touch a a, a piece of your head, and it's, it's it's an open wound. Yeah, Chris, you you've done some training over at uh 365, huh? The Henry Hoof gym. Yeah. Yeah, Henry is uh, Henry's a, a good friend of mine. He actually came he came up for my my, my world title fight in 2014 versus Provotnikov. Um, you know, him being a K1 kickboxer, myself being, you know, world champion kickboxer. Um, so he's, he's he followed me a lot when I was coming up through through the ranks. But um, yeah, I, I, whenever I'm down in Florida, I'm, I'm down there. I see all those guys with Us- Usman, uh, Mikey Chandler, um, my boy Adam Boric. Boric just lost on Saturday night, which I was pretty upset about. Bellator, kids, uh, kids stud. Yeah, yeah, on Bellator. But um, I work with uh, Dr. Corey Peacock. He's a strength coach down there. He's my strength coach as well, an exercise physiologist, and he works with all the guys. We, we kind of tag team all of his fighters down there. I do the nutrition. He does their, their strength conditioning. Did you guys cool. get to see the uh, Bellator card? I heard a lot about I saw, it. Uh, I, what's her name? I only uh, saw clips. Cyborg. Cyborg's a beast. Yeah, I yeah. Saw beast. That, was, that was a really good fight. And, uh, the finish, she looked like she was hitting a heavy bag. She was she was just drilling full full force, she, right hand like over like and over and over. Fifteen yep. hit combo at the end. Yep. Yeah, she was kicking her while she was down. That was that was that was awesome. She, it was she looked brutal. great. Yeah. I really wish I really wish there was more. She had more competition. You know what I mean? Like well, this I girl mean, cool in size, her, I, which she I does, feel she's I, great. her opponent was bigger than her. Yeah. 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 She was no, jacked I, with Julia Budge. I, 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 I definitely see that, but I just mean like on a skill based level. Like yeah. there aside from Amanda Nunez, I just don't I haven't seen anybody on skill on power, whatever it is, that could really get in there. And I and, and you know, it's a testament to her on some level, obviously, but I also think it's a testament to like how young the sport is for like female MMA. Okay. Uh, and it would be it would, you know, I think by the time enough people gain the experience that they need to really be able to hang with her she's probably going to be retired you know yeah. what i mean we're not yeah. going to get we're not really going to get to see that tested right mm-hmm. but it, i mean it's it's amazing the thing the things that she's done you know thus far you know with the skills that she has it just goes you know goes to show you i think it's another situation where like i think she's just been like she just outworked the hell out of like anybody that's ever gotten involved i think most of like female mma like kind of picked it up later on you know, she's just been doing it for so long, like so way long. before anybody yeah. else. Have you seen the videos of her sparring with Clarissa Shields? Clarissa, yeah. the, the greatest woman yeah. of all time. Like, that's yes. legit boxing. Like, she looked great with her. And that's, yeah. that's really impressive because Clarissa is a monster. She's mm. She's been crushing every every girl she fights. Mm. She's talking about your, switching to MMA. Just out of curiosity, what are your thoughts? Because I, I, it sounds like you've, you've been around a, a bit of boxing as well. You know, kickboxing, kickboxing, and MMA. Yeah. What are you? What are your general thoughts about um, how sparring sessions go between MMA fighters and boxers or kickboxers or whatever the case may be from a striking element? Do you do you feel like uh, you know in the in most cases it's relatively even? Do you feel in most cases most of the MMA guys are getting trashed? Do you think in most cases they're doing you know uh, better? I, I'm just curious. I don't know. From what I've seen, most MMA gyms, they don't spar as hard as boxers do. Boxers, uh, much more of their sparring is uh, a lot more competitive, a lot more guys trying to beat each other. Um, MMA, I've just noticed, I don't know if it's because of just a martial arts background in terms of having that that kind of control and skill. And, and also, MMA trains in that team aspect. Boxing isn't like that. You come yeah, into yeah. a gym, you know, you, you come in with your coaches, your team, you're coming to some, someone else's gym. And you're looking to fuck up whoever is their guy in their gym. And so sure. I've generally noticed that. And even even my coaches who do work with MMA guys, they've come to my sparring sessions and they're like, you guys fucking fight. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Sparring is <laughs> sparring's different than, than what you yeah, guys man. are used to in those gyms. Kickboxing, um, I would say, is in the middle. From mm-hmm. from my days, kickboxing, like I remember kickboxing, I was trying to knock you know, my sparring partners out all the time. But sure. there was a there was a level of like respect and and control that yeah. um, 
a lot of times in, mo- in a lot of boxing gyms you don't see. Yeah, I think I think in kickboxing and Muay Thai you see that. I think Muay Thai yeah. even more so than kickboxing. Yeah, Mu- Muay Thai kind of they're pretty, like, they go pretty light. Yeah, you, you see kind of this mentality of like you know sparring is just like tag and it's fun because they fight so many fucking times for fuck's yeah. sake. It's like it's like they have like three hundred fights. <laughs> it's insanity, mm-hmm. you know. Like I, I don't think if they if they sparred to fight in the gym they'd all be dead, you know. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, that's some videos. specifically. It's so dangerous. Those knees and elbows. Like you can't yeah. practice that shit. Sure, that's. I saw some videos I'm just of, starting uh, to try to implement elbows and stuff now, and it's it's an interesting thing. You know, you get like elbow pads. Even that, yeah. like, got to be careful because. Yeah. I mean, they're you, weapons. Yeah, man. Like I, having a, having elbow having pad slides a down and you strike somebody with the bone. I mean, dude, that's it's devastating. Chris, and I've, I've seen, seen, I've seen yeah. some videos of Michael Chandler like getting after it. And uh, yeah. I, I think I saw Luke Rockhold as well. I, dude, every time that someone s- s- tries to film uh, those sessions, I feel like that's a horrible idea. Because <laughs> yes. you obviously know you're on film and up. you're yeah. just going to want to look good, right? I've been in there with those guys like Luke and, and, and Mike. And, and honestly, like, and they, they spoke without headgear and they're just, they're cracking. I'm, I'm always like, geez, somebody's getting, because they, they're doing everything. They're punching, kicking, knee and elbows. They wear pads when they're out, but like, they, they, they get after it. Specifically, yeah. I guess that's a good point. I can just imagine like uh, Luke Rock holds opponents when Luke hands over the phone to someone and he's like, uh, record this. The guy's like, oh, <laughs> shit, Fuck. here we go. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Embrace yourself. Fuck. Gary, uh, you had a very interesting weekend. Oh, my God. Okay. So let's get let's get into this because there, there's no real it. smooth. There's no smooth transition into nope. my fucking week. Don't loop so, it. So, uh. I want to say, I'm trying to remember, I'm guessing it was, I think it was Thursday. And I already had like a, I had like a, uh, a night, the night before that I didn't get much sleep or whatever. So it was like, it was like 1230 at night. So I get a bunch of phone calls and from my dad and, uh, you know, my dad's an alcoholic and he, I, him calling me at 1230, especially if I'm like exhausted, I'm like, I'm probably just going to hear some like drunk ramblings Uh about something. And like, I, like. It's not nothing relevant, good, right? Like I, I don't need to pick up the phone right now at 1230 at night. You know what I mean? I'm like, all right, this could wait till tomorrow, whatever it is. So I don't answer the phone, but then I get a phone call. I, I, I get woken up every single time. Right. And then I, I get a phone call from my sister actually. And then, uh, I get the, I listen to her and you know, she's crying and I'm like, what's wrong? You know, this, that, and the other thing I, for a second, like, I'm like, Oh fuck. Like did my dad, like, did some, did my dad fucking die and somebody grabbed his phone and called like, am I in there as like son? I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what yeah. the fuck happened. And it's, it's well within reason considering, you know, his type of lifestyle. Um, I've had that happen to me before. I remember on father's day, he like lost his phone somewhere. And I like, I was like, yep, well we should probably call at the local fucking jail or like <laughs> fucking, I'm like looking up obituaries and shit for his name to find out like if, if something happened, you know? And, um, so anyway, uh, my, my sister finally is like, oh, well, dad got another DUI. This is like his second one. You know, uh, he wants me to pick him up, but I have school. She's in school for um, speech therapy right now. And uh, she he wants me to pick him up, but I got this, that. And I was like, oh, please just stop. Like, you, this is not your responsibility. Like, it's not mine either. But like, by all means, like, I'm much more free than you are. Like, by all, I, I have no problem picking him up. I just wasn't picking up the phone because I didn't think it was anything relevant. Right. So um, anyway, like I go down there. And, you know, I'm thinking about it the entire time, um, you know, like, what am I going to say or like, what am I going to do this, that, and the other thing. But, you know, ultimately, you know, I go and pick him up and I knew exactly what was going to happen. Uh, and I had discussed this with a couple of my friends beforehand, basically like he just makes excuses about all this shit. So I knew he just wasn't going to take responsibility right off the bat. Like yeah. I knew that the conversation that was going to be had was X, Y, Z happened and that's why this happened. Not, not I fucked up and this is why this happened. Right. Yeah. So of course I get in, you know, I pick him up from the police station or whatever. As soon as we get in the car, he's, he's telling me every reason why it wasn't his fault that this happened. That know? only makes you angry, huh? Oh bro. It's, it's, it, well, it's the worst quality about him. Like yeah. he, if you talk to my dad, you'd think he was a nice guy. And that's what my sister said. She's like, you know, I don't understand why he doesn't change. Like he's, it's not like he's a bad person. He's a nice, I was like, I was like, Ash, I was like, he's nice to talk to. I was like, he can be, he can be like respectful and courteous, 
But that doesn't necessarily mean he's not like fucked up. Like he's he's still that doesn't mean anything. It means well, he can put a on disease, a good face and know, hold a fucking being conversation. Al- being you know? an alcoholic is a disease. Yeah, yeah, for and sure. So so like you know she gets distracted by that. I'm like I'm like he's got fucking issues, man. So I was like, this is a second DUI. It's not like this doesn't happen by fucking magic, you know? And uh, so I pick him up and he's making all these excuses. He's saying, he's saying, oh, I, I flashed my lights at the cop because his high beams were on. And then he pulled me over and blah, 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 blah. A thousand reasons why, you know, this was, you know, fucked up on the cop. Like basically he blamed the police officer for the fact that he got the DUI, which is fucking incredible. Like to sit Wait, in the he car and with listen. The cop? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to sit in the away? car and listen to yeah. that was just like mm-hmm. interesting how this motherfucker's mind works. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, he apologized to me, which I expected. Like I'm, I, he gets the point. He gets the fact that like he like he at least is causing me problems. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, is like, okay, you get that you're causing me a problem, but you don't understand that, or sorry, you get that I'm being caused a problem, but you don't understand that's your fault. You know, he doesn't wrap his head around that. Yeah. He, in his mind, I had to go pick him up from the police station because that cop's an asshole, yeah. right? Which is just so, on so many levels. And this is just what he's done for his whole life. And that's why well, it's, it's mean, never fucking changed. Step one is taking accountability. You know, you have to recognize you have a problem sure. in order to change. Yeah. So change only comes after that. And but, you know, uh, go, ahead. go ahead. I've had a close family member fall yeah. victim of, of the bottle as well. And it's, man, it's super sad to see how like their life just spirals down and they even more, they morph into, into a shell of themselves. Yeah, it's yeah. Really that's sad. that's that's one thing about booze, man. It definitely it, it sucks the life out of you. It's different than other addictions. I have mm-hmm. uh, I've got some close friends and family members who who got addicted to to pills and other kinds of drugs, and they're just they're just they're addicts. You know, that's that's just the way they are. Sure. And to to see the way that their their minds work, like you just said, like it's it's an amazing like just to sit yeah. next to them and hear them talk and like mm-hmm. try to and rationalize these these yeah. absolutely ridiculous things. Yeah. And it's just like, yo, I can't, you can't help those people. The power they, they of have rationalization, to, just like you had mentioned, is, is incredible, yeah. actually. Like, so, so rationalization is something that like we can do as human beings to achieve like, like really difficult things. Like for instance, like, let's say like either any of us was in the military and we like killed somebody during wartime and like that was part of our orders or whatever. And, you know, it ended up being, you know, whether it was somebody innocent or like a situation where we felt guilty about it or whatever the case may be. And, and we might be able to rationalize. We might be able to use our brain and rationalize that like, well, that was our job. You know, we had to do what we had to do. And like, it's not, you know, it's not really on me, this, that, and the other thing. And I might be able to get up tomorrow and still live my life and not fucking fold under the pressure of, you know, whatever that situation was. And then there's these other situations where human beings use rationalization, like this one where my, with my dad, where it's just crippling. You know, like it, rationalization can be empowering or it could literally mm-hmm. fucking ruin you. You can use rationalization to just like make, to take the responsibility that you have in your life away from literally everything. Well, and, he's using uh, it to keep going. He, you know, he's yeah, giving himself, yeah. giving himself fuel to, to keep it going. Because if you think about it, a, lot of, a lot of these people, like if they really thought about their situation, what they're sure. doing, they'd be miserable bags of shit. They'd hate themselves. They'd kill themselves. Yeah. So it keeps them alive. It's, it's sure. almost like a survival, survival tactic. Sure. Yeah. I think self-awareness is one of the most important traits that a human being can 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 have. Having that is is like having awareness of of what's happening with your life or where your defects are at. Yes. Questioning yourself, right? That's Some the only the only thing that can cause a change. <laughs> and I think now being, in our society being aware of just... of your defects or or where you know you might be lacking. Yeah. Go ahead, Chris. What were you gonna say? I, I was saying, like in this society now, like we 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 live in a world where that's not highlighted at all. We yeah. live in a fake social media world where you don't need to question anything you do. You do whatever the fuck you want, and <laughs> you can you can be delusional as hell. Everyone's everyone's rich and famous and happy on Instagram. Sure. You know? So and that's it's prized at this at this stage. Yeah. It's, it's it's very strange and it's it's happening very quick. This wasn't mm-hmm. like this twenty years ago. Yeah, I, I had given a, a speech to my class afterwards. I just told them all about like what happened or whatever. Not for any other reason, not to like get a side. I actually told them like, if any of you tell me sorry or like give me a, like try to turn this into a sob story, I was like, I'm going to punch you in your throats. 
but like not like for real but like you know what i mean like i tried to like set the tone like i'm not doing this because i want you guys to like feel bad for me i'm i told them the story you know for exactly those reasons like you said you know for people to to understand that like you know how how this kind of stuff happens and like how you know these people let these their habits like take control and how they uh you know don't take any responsibility and one of the things that i said was is that the worst case scenario for you taking responsibility for something, even if it wasn't your fault, is you're gonna get better. Like you're gonna become a better person because you're gonna change something about yourself for the better. Like if you, if you analyze the situation and you go, all right, well, I could have done this better, I could have done this better, I could have done this better, this was my fault, this is my fault. You're gonna come back tomorrow and you're gonna try to fix that, right? Even if it wasn't your fault, the worst thing that could happen is I got a little bit better tomorrow. And even though it wasn't my fault, right? Yeah, you can't change what you don't recognize or don't want to recognize. Sure. You just can't. Simply put, <laughs> own your shit. Own your shit. Own Absolutely. your shit. That's that's one of my favorite things to say. Just own your shit. Like don't 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 make up excuses. Don't fucking rationalize yourself out of out of out of a corner. Own your shit. And you yeah. will grow from owning your shit. Mm-hmm. Guys, current events time. I witness news where news comes first. This morning, Kobe Bryant died in a helicopter crash. Such a sad day for a legend like that. And such a good man. Like, he was such a positive role model. I, I remember I I used to see a lot of his uh, speeches and, and just motivational clips and really helped me out. Is there anything that you guys could tell me about, like, uh, that you, because like I had said, like, I'm so new to, like, Kobe Bryant in general, like, as a human being, that you guys could contribute to the conversation as to, like, you know, uh, like, what you got. Like, you just, you had just mentioned, like, some motivational clips, this and the other thing, like, like, what could you guys say that would, like, really embody, like, him as a person, you know? Well, I think, I, first of all, I think even just to touch on his accomplishments, like, he's, he's, like, a Michael Jordan level basketball player. And like yeah. he's that, he's that legendary in terms of his accomplishments. Five NBA he's championships. Yeah. Sure. Ridiculous. Two, 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 I think two numbers have been retired, two different jerseys. Like it's ridiculous what he's done. Five or six rings or something like that. Um, you know, he, in terms of that, but yeah, I think the motivation piece is huge. Cause I think there's so many players that were even his peers and his contemporaries and his, his, his opponents all, all looked up to him as yep. mm -hmm. the hardest worker in the room, and as the exactly. guy that they strives that they strive to be like, even though they're trying to beat him. Yeah. Um, he's just one of those people who's just such a ridiculously hard worker and disciplined, and so <laughs> hyper focused on on his job and what his task was. That that's that's why Frank was saying he he transcends basketball because he, sure. he's bigger than that. Because he, mm -hmm. he has that that ability or has that 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 goal inter orientated you know, drive that could transcend to into anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, just uh, touching up on that, his uh, peers as well also s stated that um, every time they would be around him, he like he exuded this greatness. There was a greatness about him, like his aura. Mm -hmm. You know, you just knew that you were witnessing one of the greatest basketball players around. Sure. I had it's heard, it's uh, crazy when you meet people like that. You meet those people that have that kind of. You know who, who I met who had that? Michael uh, Mike Tyson. When he, dude, yeah. he comes into a room, he's just he's larger than life. Yeah. Like honestly, he's you know obviously he's had his ups and his downs, but he's just one of those people that his magnetism and his energy was on a different level, whole mm -hmm. just different wavelength of a of a human. Yeah, I had heard, one of the motivational clips that my friend had sent me of uh, Kobe was um, was one of the opponents. Uh, of him talking about how he showed up uh, before a game to, a, mm -hmm. to one of the places to like practice or whatever. And uh, he's like, I showed up at, I don't know, let's say 4 p.m. or whatever. And Kobe was already there practicing, right? So he did like whatever he wanted to do to warm up and practice. And, uh, you know, when he was done, like Kobe was still going and he had like showered or whatever. And then like Kobe had still going after that. And he's like, oh, fuck. Like, let me sit down and like watch what's going on here. Like, so he sat down for like another 30 minutes and Kobe was still going. And then like the guy was like, all right, whatever. Like he went to the sauna, came out, like Kobe was still going. And then at the end of it all, like, I guess like, uh, I think he had like crushed their team or scored like a shit ton of points or something. And, uh, the guy actually walked up to Kobe was like, yo, he's like, he's like, what was, what was that dude? Like, like you literally like warmed up for fucking 
three and a half hours. Like what, what, what was that? Like, why are you doing this? And he's like, Oh, he's like, well, I saw that you were there and I just wanted to show you that there was literally nothing you could do to outwork me. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that story I was like, before. Damn, yeah. that's a gangster shit right there. That's amazing. That's yeah, amazing. man. So one of the, one crazy thing that happened, and obviously this whole situation is very sad. And one thing that we didn't mention too, is that like, not only did Kobe die, like his, his daughter was in the, pl- in the uh, helicopter, right? Oh my God. Yeah. That's horrible. Yeah. I can't imagine. Fucking, I can't imagine. She was 13 wife. too. Terrible dude on the family. Oh, such um, a tragic. the, there uh, was a reporter. Now this is like really fucking unfortunate on so many levels, but uh, there was a reporter from MSNBC oh, I that was that. trying to, re- she was trying to do her best to report on the subject. Right. And so she's talking about how Kobe is from the Lakers. And instead of saying Lakers, somehow she manages to say the N word. And I don't, it's clear as day. If you listen to the clip, I strongly recommend that anybody that's listening to this podcast right now goes to the clip and listens to it. Man, like, it's pretty, it's pretty rough, it's, dude. Like, it's how, hard to come bad. back from that. It's really bad. How are people in 2020 dropping N bombs like that? I just. Well, I don't think, I, okay. Well, so she's not going to be working anymore. So yeah. <laughs> there's a couple happen. things that run through my head, though. Like, all right, so. Could could like shit slip out that doesn't make any sense. She claims her claim. I just read about this a little bit. Is that she she meant to say on some level she was thinking Knicks instead of Lakers, and somehow oh, and she, she got like her words, two, and that's what happened. And right, that's what happened. Which I can kind of see. I can kind of see. But what what the basically what the mainstream media or not media, but like people that are criticizing are gonna say is. Oh, well, why was that she word was not in her mind? You know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah. for it to slip out, right? Like even if it was a mistake, like it should never have happened because she you shouldn't. You just think it was a coincidence because she was trying to – she was thinking up two words that sounded like that. Yeah. You, but I, well, I don't know what the true story is. I have no idea. I mean it's clearly – it should clearly I mean, it, mean it kind of it. it kind of does make sense. Like why would you want to say something like that? Yeah, I don't think that she was thinking that. Obviously. But yeah. I feel bad about shit like this to be honest. Like I obviously understand that, you know, that that word and, you know, the way people feel. It's very hurtful and on a level that I wouldn't even understand um, coming from the background that I, I come from. But uh, – but I do also on the other side of it, like when stuff like this happens in the media where like people make genuine mistakes and like the kind of culture uh, that we have going on now with social media that like the only answer is this person has to get fired. This person has to be canceled. Yeah. This person has to. Be. Yeah. And it just seems a little fucking harsh, man, you know, over like over something that like we don't we not the truth is none of us really know. Like mm-hmm. whether you know what the person was thinking or yeah. whether it was intentional. This, She'll that, never get the benefit really of the doubt. And we're just gonna ruin somebody's life over that, mm-hmm. right? Over like a like a potential just accidental fuck up, right? Like yeah. basically like we're going against this idea of innocent until proven guilty, and we're just like guilty. Fuck you. You're fired. Yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's pe- how you know, it is today. People get fired over mistakes, nowadays. you know, and that that was yeah, a big one. That, that's true. And that's true. It, and it I sucks that this it. takes away from you know the story, the real story at hand, which is you know honoring yeah. Kobe. That's true. That's true. Yeah. The coronavirus has a death toll Ooh, yeah. of 56 now. Oh and shit. 2,000 like people since, are infected. Uh, so it's been. Days ago. Yeah. Just getting there. It's getting so there. Is it, is it, are we at like zombie apocalypse yet? Or not we're, yet, we're not Chris, yet. but okay. I would start rallying up the weapons mm-hmm. and stocking up on baby food. <laughs> yeah, I got a... So, so uh, the, I, I gotta, remember how I told you I my friend was buying the baby food? So Yeah, you I, could talk to Gary's friend, the baby oh, food. Oh, man, food. that's nice. Is that, a, nice. is that a, a Japanese kitchen knife? It is. It is. Yeah, dude, I have a bunch of those in my house as well. These They're the best. Is- Fucking awesome. For anybody listening to this, if you don't have, if you've never had a Japanese kitchen knife, buy one of them. Okay, mm-hmm. you'll know if it's a Japanese kitchen knife because it's going to be at, at at minimum a hundred dollars or more. If it's not, yeah, it's not minimal. Yeah. Um, you need to get one and you need to use it to cut literally anything, and then go try to go back to using any other fucking knife. The fact I that literally, I in, only use this knife. I don't need anything yeah, else. Just the fact so that awesome. these aren't in every mainstream restaurant that like sells like high quality steak or anything like that is, is baffling to me. I don't understand how they don't have a uh, minute, like at least like a steak knife version. Of, Cause I have smaller versions of the Japanese uh, cooking knives as well. Um, 
it's just it's it's complete game changer. It's like you take one swipe and the fucking meat is cu- it's over. You know, you, people just don't game understand. Over. <laughs> so the U.S. is evacuating around 230 Americans from China, and you know they're just stocking up a plane with everybody, diplomats, their families, and U.S. citizens. Do we have any it's, cases over here yet? See what scares me about uh, that yes. whole thing is it's yeah. like are they properly screening the fucking diplomats and stuff are they just going to take them here regardless of whether or not they're infected dude i you don't know, know. I mean? there's been cases uh reported in the US France and Australia so it's oh, wow. i mean it's spread like i kind of we're, like we're all fucked everybody fucking there everybody's going to die fuck it <laughs> i was looking up like 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 past pandemics and we we had i think four major like flu pandemics in the 1900s and in, in the mm-hmm. 20th century, the Spanish flu killed like between 100 and 200 million people or something yeah. like that. Like that's insane. That's it's a flu. It's the yeah. flu. It's killing like healthy people. That's fucking nuts. Um, Everybody disease. should just drop their pants and have fun. Let's, <laughs> disease. Let's get a gangbang going, guys. <laughs> let's just enjoy ourselves. I mean, I'm in. I mean. <laughs> No, we don't have to. Yeah, we, yeah, I feel like Gary's doing that anyway. I don't think this is really going to change. We don't oh, have to really pull my leg here, Frankie. We don't, we don't have much time, guys. Oh, we're, we're starting that now? Oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm way ahead of the game already. Good news. I'm going to the strip club later. <laughs> oh, man. So I got another, another really good one. Stephen A. Smith and Joe Rogan are beefing. Oh, bro. Fuck so that guy. S- Stephen A. Smith said that uh-huh. Cerrone... Uh, after getting hit with the shoulders, McGregor's shoulders, he looked like he was done and gave up. Yeah. And then Joe later said that commentators like him who don't know MMA are bad for the sport. Yeah. And then Stephen A came out with a video doubling down on his comments. Yeah, I saw that. Saying that he that Cerrone folded like a cheap tent and he's standing by his comments. He also invited Joe Rogan to name the time and place. Joe, name the time and place so we can discuss the matter. <laughs> And, we'll uh, do a debate battle. Yeah, we'll like, do a debate battle. For that. And, then, <laughs> and then, and then um, yeah, um, Connor came out defending Joe and and yeah. Cerrone, saying that Stephen Stephen A doesn't know combat sport, and that he should respect those who make the walk. He should apologize for his comments. Yeah, facts, facts. I mean, that guy talks a lot of shit about fighters, and he has no business doing it. Uh, Have you ever like, heard like, him talk about anybody else that re- that like comes to mind, like that you remember any quotes from, like what he said? He's he talks about a lot of fighters. He, talks about, he loves boxing. He talks about boxing a lot. But yeah, yeah, I had he, heard he commented he does, about boxing. He, he definitely comes down on guys um, yeah. pretty harshly. Yeah, I think one of the things that Joe said is pretty accurate. It's that like when you do this in other sports, it's not as big of a deal because it's like, like all right, in in the NBA, I don't, how many games do they play a year? A ton. Mm-hmm. Like a ton. shit ton, right? Same, yeah. like football, maybe slightly less, right? But what, like whatever. But like, it's like you yeah, know when you like, six months. <laughs> yeah, when you shit on these guys, like it's like there's a million games. It's not that it's not as big of a deal, and the consequences aren't as dire, right? Like it's not like you didn't just get like your you didn't just get fucking viciously KO'd in front of like your friends and family and millions of people. It's it's such a different thing fighting than playing baseball like it's just it's just fucking different and i think that when you're commentating on it you need to have that in mind like on some i like him dude if i'm on sports center because i get dunked on i don't care compared to getting knocked the fuck out in front of a million people like it's they're two they're apples and oranges you can't compare them at all i think dunk on me all day like that sucks like yeah i find them like getting knocked out is way worse Sure. I find him wildly entertaining. I really like him. He's like, well, he's a color, color, he does color commentary. Yeah. That's what he does. You know, he does, he says outlandish stuff. And I think that's why he's as popular as he is. You know, a lot of people want to tune in and see him talk, you know, smack. On the note, talk. on the note of that, like, and even Joe Rogan kind of mentioned it a little bit in his criticism. Um, in, in saying that it's like bad for the sport, like, I'm at the end of the day, we're all talking about this shit right now. Yeah. Exactly. Tons of people are talking about it. That's what Stephen A said. It's attention to the sport. And it's not it's not going to be bad. It's going to be a positive thing like at the end of the day, but it's on a personal level. Like on yeah. a personal level for for a fighter like especially a fighter like Donald Cerrone who's literally been doing this forever and has broken a million fucking records in the sport. Mm-hmm. Oh man. And and in a comment that just couldn't be more fucking inaccurate. Right. Uh 
and di- just directly insulting of like, cause, cause like saying, saying somebody lost cause they suck is one thing saying somebody quit. lost because they Cause folded they quit. and they quit and they're not like, they didn't have their heart in it and that kind of stuff. Like, dude, that's so much worse. Yeah. That's like a personal attack. That's that's on your yep. character. That's not on yep. your fighting abilities. That's that's an mm-hmm. attack on your character, dude. Yep. It's uh it's it's that's tough to handle, man. Like I, I don't necessarily know if I think he should apologize. Like, I don't give a fuck if he apologizes, to be honest. Um I don't I think a lot of people overrate fucking who gives a fuck who who apologizes for shit. People apologizing for jokes and this, that, and I don't I don't really care. But I think that we're well within our rights to fucking criticize him for it because yeah. it should be criticized. Yeah. It's Chris's fitness tips he's got for you. He's got the little tips. He's gonna give it all to you. Just the tip. The little, little fitness tip. He's gonna give it all to you. Chris, let's uh, talk about fasting. Oh, who d- okay. Who does fasting benefit? What type it of people should benefit. be fasting, and is fasting good? Yes, it can benefit most people. Um, I I think that when it comes to fasting, I don't like it for my fighters. I don't like it for myself. Um, I when you're when you're looking at two or three training sessions a day, um, and having to have to recover. From, from each session and rebuild, you know, broken down tissue, especially for, for like a fighter, for example, where there's a lot of, there's a lot of cellular turnover when, and you have a, a finite amount of time in order to recover between sessions. I don't like guys to be fasting because they just, they want to keep a constant flow of amino acids and nutrients through their body to make sure that they're, they're recovering from the sessions and they can be the best version of themselves for the next session. Um, but in terms of Average everybody Joe's. else, yeah, I think it's, I think it's fantastic. And I, a lot of, a lot of the normal clients, the non-athlete clients that I've worked with, I, 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 I push intermittent fasting on them. Anywhere from 12 to 15 to 18 hours fasts, um, even on a daily basis, is really beneficial. So what happens with two, – two, two, two things that I think that are really beneficial from fasting are, number one is the gut rest, allowing your gut to, to, to truly rest and recover where you don't have to digest food constantly. If you, Athletes have to like we're constantly ingesting like you know you're eating all day long because you have to in order to keep up the the with the metabolic demands of, of your training, but most people aren't like that at all. And allowing their gut to rest and recover and to 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 not have to work all the time is really beneficial, especially because the majority of the immune system is found within the gut. So a healthy gut generally means that the rest of your body is healthy as well. Secondly, it does something which is like this is like the new kale salad, kale shake kind of idea that's running around the world is autophagy, which is uh, kind of like how your body cleans out old, old beat up, beat up, tired cells. So when you go into a fasted state, your body will technically cannibalize itself and it'll, it'll remove and recycle some of those more, those older, more senescent cells that your body doesn't necessarily need and is not doing their job properly. So it kind of cleans out the system, recycles your way. And it's, uh, Almost like a almost like a cellular detox. So you know what fat- they say about a healthy gut. Healthy gut, healthy butt. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Accurate. <laughs> Keep going. Um so For yeah, all so, our so joke fans. Right. <laughs> so the uh the idea that that the autophagy from, from fasting and the, the gut rest, I think are the two most beneficial parts. And then of course weight loss, right? It's just a, a smaller window to eat your calories, take your, you take, take in, take in food. And if you're, if that's your goal, Dude, it's um, been it a game be changer bed. in my life. Yeah, you, as you've been at it for years, fasting. right? Yeah. I've been doing it for yeah. like almost three years now, but I thought that I would never like, uh, hit the weight I was on in college. I'm like, maybe I'm just getting older and I just can't put on like the muscle mass that I, or the definition that I used to have. And then when I discovered inter- intermittent fasting, uh, it's totally been a game game changer on on my physique, and I don't ha- even have to like work out as crazy yeah. as I used to. Also, do you, so. I mean, I'm sure you find this too. Like, you just have a lot more time. You don't have to cook yeah, and eat also, and, rec- and clean up and all true. that. Like that. I, it in terms fits of my of lifestyle being perfectly. Efficient. Yeah, in terms of like being daily efficient and 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 uh, efficient with your time and and getting shit done, I think it's it's fantastic. And um, I also think that it favors some body types more than others as well. For sure. I, for example, like the, my, my leaner body type, um, I, I don't carry a lot of body fat. I need to eat all the time. 
Um, I, I have, if I don't eat for stretches at a time, I, f- I feel it a lot more than other people, uh, might where I have a lot, I have a lot of more friends who are like clients and friends who are more heavily muscled or carry more body fat, have different kind of body types and, and fasting works really well for them. Would you consider yourself a mesomorph or more like a mesoecto? I'm like a mesoecto cause I can gain muscle mass pretty easily, but I can lose it really fast as well. So, yeah. um, you know. I, that would definitely sound myself like more of a more of a mix, like you said. Uh, so I, I've been question that I, I've been curious about with, uh, regarding this. So uh, I don't really have you know one thing to contribute or another to this particular topic, other than I, so I will say up. I kind of agree to you. What's that? <laughs> so shut, shut it. Up. Shut up. <laughs> so your I, pie hole. I will, I will agree with you about the uh, you know I wouldn't really recommend it to like you know athletes that are like pushing all day every day training. I remember like so John. Um, <clears throat> only eats once a day most of the time (laughs) unless he's traveling or something like that um and i remember asking him i was like do you recommend that for like other like for like athletes and so he's like absolutely not he's like i don't i don't think you guys could ever do that um but the the main question i have is why because it's not like this this idea is like complicated in my in my eyes why is it that i would say maybe within the last three years or so this has become something that people have been talking about. Like, I can't remember a time in my lifetime where people had ever advised long periods of time without eating. And, and again, I'm not, this isn't a criticism. This is just me saying, I just, I'm curious why at no point nobody was standing up in the scientific community 15 years ago saying, hey, um, I think that if you guys skipped breakfast, like you might actually be able to lose weight a little bit more efficiently. Yeah, I understand I that think question. It's like, if yeah. it's so great, why now? Yeah. Well, right? if you really look at it from a historical standpoint, if you look at it from hunter-gatherers, like, yeah, we fasted all the time because there just wasn't food available. Sure. All the time. But also, if you look at religions, there's um, almost all major religions have some form of fasting in it for certain parts of the year. Yeah. Fasting from meats, fasting from this and that, don't eat at all. Uh, yep. Ramadan, where they, they literally don't eat during daylight for for, yeah. uh, for months at a time. So, uh-huh. I mean, historically, it's it's been something that has been practice worldwide yeah that's but not you're fair. right i think i think i think that in terms of popular culture um it hasn't gotten any kind of real you know movement until recently yeah. um because of pressures from big food i think the big farm big, uh, big you know pushing for breakfast kellogg's you know breakfast is the most important meal sure. of the day um sure. you know beef it's it's what's for dinner you know i think i think pressures from these big industries um have really shaped what we've done from a dietary approach for the past 40 years um yeah. and i think now we're seeing we're, we're understanding that and we've mm-hmm. learned we know more about nutrition and nutrition science than ever before sure. we still don't know everything yeah. by any means but um but yeah i think that i think that the, the pressures from big business aren't as prevalent as they used to be. Sure. And we're allowing, you know, these people who probably have been saying this for 15, 20 years yeah. uh, to actually have, give them a voice now. Yeah. Cause that's, that's what I would have guessed. Like, cause like I said, it's not like that, you know, crazy of an idea. Uh, I would have just thought that at some point somebody would have done a study on, Hey, if we don't eat for X amount of time, you know, what effect does that have on the body, right? And then if that study yielded good results, you would have imagined that it would have been released to the public and people would know about it. And, uh, you know, people would have talked about it. It's not like we didn't have that capability, say, 10, 15 years ago. Well, right? maybe, that's all, maybe we that's didn't have it because we didn't have social media back then. I don't yeah. think that like nutritionists or like independent nutritionists or, or people that did research had a platform to actually, that's true. you know, pr- preach this method or, or this you make system a good point or there. Cause it kind of what he was talking about with like bigger, basically back then, let's say 15 years ago, if you had a voice, it's because you had money, power, et cetera. And yep. now like everybody kind of has a voice. So that exactly. was my next point about research. Research sure. is all about funding. You know, yep. where's the funding come from? Um, it doesn't necessarily skew, you know, the results. It really sh- sure. it doesn't, you know, honestly, if you're get, if you're getting funded by by the beef farmers of America, that's not going to make you're going to skew your results. Your results, your results. But the money to do those studies, sure. who's going to who's going to fund a fasting study? That's yeah. going to tell the consumers not to consume. Good so it, the, the 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 money circle's not there for that. Um, whereas sense. now I think we have a lot more people who are actually you know health is health is big business now, and fasting sure. is it can be a healthy thing. So there's sure. money. For it. 
It's Gary's product review. Shit nobody needs, but Gary buys too. Review. I have I have enjoyed every single one of these product reviews so far. He's the <laughs> shit that he pulls out. <laughs> that soul so shooter random. was crazy. So random. There's there's no no continuity at all. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. We have a Mexican right. gorilla. So, this is my my uh, pet gorilla here. <laughs> Harambe. He's not really a pet. He's fake, Gary. Hey. I mean, that's a, what is that? A wood? <laughs> People a wood have gorilla? pet rocks, Frankie. Let me live my life. Did he, did he come with that Mexican sombrero, or did he you? Did not come with the sombrero. The sombrero is kind of a separate. Well, now there's no sombrero. But there. <laughs> is he as heavy of... as he looks? Like, it looks He's like you really. Heavy. Like that's... this is like a good. This is a good like at least 20 to 25 pounds, but it's like awkward. But anyway, so I'm gonna put him down now. I feel like, yeah. oh, okay. That's a really so, ugly wooden gorilla. One day I come home after a trip to Asia, like I came back from one of my fights or something, right? And uh, I'm exhausted. You know, any of those flights are like fucking 20 hours. It's a disaster. Killer. So yeah. I'm stumbling in my house. And the first thing I do is I go to my bathroom. I'm gonna go take a piss. So. I'm peeing in my toilet and directly behind me is my shower. And you know how like some showers have uh, like a pane that's basically like, I don't know how to put it. It's like blurry, like it blurs things yeah. out. So, so the pain of the, of the shower is, is blurry. So I, I'm taking pee and I kind of like, you know how you get a sense for like, there's something off wherever you are. Like there's someone around you that's not supposed to be there or something like I'm peeing and I'm like, I don't know, something doesn't feel right. Your spider senses. Is, is so maybe my like, maybe my peripheral took it in as before I went to pee and just didn't register right away. So I kind of like look over my shoulder and I look through the fucking shower, and I see what looks like a person crouched in a ball in a hooded sweatshirt. That's what I thought, right? Like I'm thinking like Should there's a crap person. Your pants? There's a person <laughs> that was robbing my house, and now they're hiding, hiding in, in my shower, shower, crouched in their sweatshirt, trying to trying to like get me to think that they're not there. So I Did open the door. let out a girly scream? <laughs> I open the door. I open the door with like a, I went and go grab the, uh, like a knife for my, I have like 37 knives in my house. So I grab like a knife like this and uh, I'm like, I'm like readying it and I open the shower door and there's the fucking gorilla, <laughs> the fucking gorilla sitting in my shower. And I texted Gordon because uh, I knew He's, I knew he was the one that fucking got it for me or whatever. Right. But uh, right. I was like, bro, you scared the fuck out of me, bro. I thought there was a person robbing my house, and you fu he put this plastic gorilla in my, <laughs> in my house. And Frank, did you brings... notice how close that that knife was? Like it was when they <laughs> when in arms reach. He's just like, uh, yeah, you know, I have yeah. knives all over my house. Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> just, he's just ready to go with the knives. Yeah, this one is a, was a gift from uh, my uh, student Jack. It's, uh, like K -bar. A, it's, like knife. it's not yeah. particularly my favorite uh, style of knife. knife, the K bar, but it's very iconic. So, uh, and this one in particular is very sharp. So I'm a fan. Happy so, for it. Does the gorilla bring you comfort, Gary? Like those I emotional mean, dogs that they assign people that are I mean, emotional. It keeps, it keeps Harambe in my mind daily, like it should be in everyone's mind. <laughs> what exactly is Harambe? Are you serious? Yeah, I don't know what that is. You're really serious right now? I swear to God. Dude, Harambe. Do you Harambe know what Harambe is, Chris? Icon, man. Yeah. Do you know, see, Chris doesn't even know. You don't know who Harambe is either? Am I losing my fucking mind? Are you guys serious? This is crazy. So, you, so you, you don't know who Kobe Bryant is, but that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. But, but Harambe is like, he's like player. outraged. <laughs> all right, fair enough. Harambe, first of all, Harambe, Harambe, Kobe Bryant. Uh, Anyway, uh, <laughs> so Harambe was a gorilla who was in a zoo, and when when a child climbed over the barrier or whatever into his enclosure, uh, he was playing with the child like like they were having fun. Like the child, like it was it was all is good. That, is that the gorilla they shot dead? Exactly. So it was all good. Like he never tried to hurt the kid or anything like yeah. that. Um, but I guess he would. Th their their story, the the guys that shot him, was oh well, if we would have like tried to tranquilize him or anything like that, 
maybe he would have freaked out and like hurt the kid. So we just shot him instead. So it was like this big story on the news about like, you know, Harambe, like it was got like bullshit that they fucking killed. I, mean, him. I, I recall the time that that came out, but I, I don't think anybody remembers the gorilla's name, dude. Dude, you know? everyone remembers the gorilla's. Are you guys fuck? You guys have to be fucking with me. You have to be fucking with me. Not really. It's iconic, dude. There was I don't even remember that. Everywhere. I don't even know that story. Honestly. Yeah. I'm fucking gotta, mind blown. I got to look, I gotta look uh, that up. Jesus, dude. I want you guys, this is your homework. You can give me homework for Kobe Bryant if you want to. But your I'm homework I'm looking is, it up right now. It's a like, look up fucking up Harambe up. memes, okay? And yeah. I want you to fucking see what's out there. This I'm is gonna, me I'm writing be, uh... This is me writing down my homework. <laughs> Wait, wait. I'm gonna do it. I wanna read. I wanna read about this 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 situation. Yeah, man. Hey, Gary, this is yeah. my homework right here. <laughs> That's like me throwing go, it in the trash. Like, go ahead and look up Harambe on like YouTube, and whatever video pops up first, I want you to tell me how many. Let's look how many views there are on whatever fucking video pops up, because I guarantee right. you it's like millions. I think it's about time that I let the listeners know that our Gmail is fleshwoundpodcast at gmail.com so they can keep. The topic's coming and uh, hit us up with anything that you want us to cover or any advice that you guys want. 10 million views on this fucking thing, man. 10 million on the first video. And that's just one video. And we'll end ah, on that. Like this ain't current yeah. events. <laughs> Bye, Harambe. All right, guys. It's been a good one. Right. Peace out. Later, I bitches. Move for no man. No man. No man. No man. No man. Just a flesh wound, just a flesh wound, just a flesh wound, just a flesh wound.